I have my coffee. Good to go. <clears throat> hey guys, happy Saturday. Uh, thank you for watching my video blog. This is a daily video blog of my daily Bible reading. And so far it's gone great. I've gone through the book of Nehemiah and now I just went through or I'm going through the book of Esther. I'm halfway through. I'm, uh, tomorrow is going to be the last chapters of Esther. But I will tell you in the time that I've taken uh, some time to, to really dig a little deeper in my daily Bible reading, I will tell you my love for God and my desire to learn more about God has grown in such in just a week and I'm I'm just I'm amazed. So, I'm going to keep moving on. Yesterday we talked about Esther chapters 1 through chapters 3 and in Esther's 1 to 3, we learned about how there was a man named Haman who was promoted above all other officials and everywhere he went, it was a decree that everybody had to bow down to Haman, but the only person who wouldn't bow down to Haman was Mordecai. And uh, Mordecai, it, it enraged Haman that Mordecai wouldn't bow down. But today what I read was Esther's chapters 4 through 6. And here's how it started. He uh, set a decree to kill all the Jews in all of the provinces. Now remember there were 127 provinces and the decrees hadn't reached all of them. However, uh, every, every province that the decree did reach that all Jews were to be uh, annihilated essentially by by all common people they had a right to annihilate all Jews they were they were instructed to they were commanded to uh, and they were going to get payment for doing it uh, it reached uh, some of the provinces and the ones that it reached there was a great sadness for for all of the Jews as you can imagine so you have Mordecai he hears about this he reads this decree and he responds in grief uh, he tears his clothes, he puts on sackcloth and puts on ashes. Now this was a form of grief back in Bible times. Oh, they would tear their clothes and put on sackcloth. And when you have sackcloth, you're not allowed to go into the king's in in, in the citadel. So you have you have Mordecai, he's sitting outside of the 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 gates of the king, the king's gates, and you have Queen Esther, remember, she was promoted to queen because she was so beautiful and the king just, he fell in love with her instantly and he made her queen. And she heard that Mordecai was at the gates with sackcloth and so she sent uh, one of her eunuchs to go and give him new garments and, and call him in so that she could have a conversation with him. But uh, he responded, no, I'm not going to. He sent back his, he sent back the decree back to to Esther to read and then he commanded her he said go to the king and plead for us plead for your people uh, she gets a message back from the Enoch she reads the decree and she responds back I can't because it's illegal for me to go into the king's courts if I go in the penalty is death and the only way that her life would be spared is if the king held out a golden scepter and that was a sign of come in I'm inviting you in uh, you're not going to be put to death so her response to the to Mordecai it reached Mordecai and Mordecai said his response to her was now remember they're talking through an Enoch so it's 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 just kind of a crazy back and forth story so you have Mordecai his response to her was if you stay silent your people will perish but don't think that you're going to escape this and then he gave her kind of something to think about. Maybe you became queen for such a time as this. She then gets the response and she responds back to, to Mordecai with, okay, what you should do is find everybody in the province of Susa and pray and fast for three days. I'm going to do the same. I'm going to get my servants. We're going to pray and fast for three days. And then I'm going to go into the king's courts. And if I perish, I perish. And that was her attitude to the whole thing. So Mordecai does as she commands and, and she goes and and she, on the third day, she dresses up as, as nice as she can and she goes into the king's courts and the king sees her and there's that moment where she doesn't know what's going to happen, whether or not if she's going to be sentenced to be put to death or if the king's going to have favor on her. But of course, the king, he's just enamored by her beauty and he holds out his golden scepter and he tells her, come here. And he says, what is it, my queen? Make your request. Anything you want up to half of my kingdom, I will give to you. And her request was, well, I have a feast that's prepared for you. 
do you mind if you and Haman come to this feast? So they agreed and they come to the feast. And after they were done eating, he asks Esther, what is it that you are asking for? What do you request? I'll give you anything up to half my kingdom. And so I think it's because of hesitation. The Bible doesn't, doesn't point this out. She's like, can you guys come to another feast again tomorrow night? Only if it, if I have favor in your, in your eyes, King. And so the King, he, he, uh, he agreed and, and Haman, he was so happy about this and, and he just got done. He got finished eating and he's walking out the King's gates and people are bowing down and there he sees Mordecai not bowing down and it enrages him. So he doesn't do anything. He goes home and he starts to complain. He calls all of his friends. He calls his wife and he's like, Mordecai won't bow down to me. I'm so important, but only person who won't bow down to me is Mordecai. He starts complaining and all he cares about is Mordecai bowing down to him so uh one of his friends he he says hey uh why don't you build a gallow and hang him in the square so everybody could see what happens if people don't bow down to you and Haman loved this idea so Haman's out he's uh building his his gallow meanwhile it's, it's late at night and the king he can't sleep for anything and he calls one of his servants to pull out a book of records because book of records it's kind of boring maybe he'll read me the book of records and I'll fall asleep so he's in his bed and he's listening to his servant read out a book of records and the first record or one of the records that's that's read to him is the record about how Mordecai saved his life by filling him in on two of the Enochs who were plotting to kill the king so the king, he talks to the to his, his servant. He's like, wait a second, Mordecai, did we ever do anything for him? And the, the Enoch or, or the, the servant, he was like, no, we haven't done anything to, to honor him. And so he's like, well, who's in the square right now? Remember, it's late at night and they're building the gallows. And uh, you have Haman. He's in, the, in the, the king's court. So he says, call Haman in here. So he calls Haman in. He says, Haman, uh, if I was to honor a man, how would, how would, what would be the best way to show him honor? And Haman thinks that the king is talking about him. So he's like, well, you should honor him by putting him on your very robes, putting on him the robes that you wear, putting on him the, the crown that you wear and putting, and putting him on the horse that you ride. And then you take the highest, the most respected official and you have him paraded around and the official has to say, this is what happens when the king is, honors you. So the king, he, he's like, I, I love this idea. Hey, man, uh, what I want you to do is I want you to go and get Mordecai and I want you to do exactly what you said and you're the highest official, so I want you to uh, parade him around and talk about how I've honored, Mord- how I'm honoring Mordecai. So Haman, he goes and he does it and uh, he parades Mordecai around and he proclaims how the king is honoring Mordecai. And uh, after that, uh, the, the chapter ends with Haman. He goes home and he cries. He cries to his wife and his friend. And he's like, the king made me do this. And, and, they, they, and they end the chapter with, with well, if you, if you don't uh, do something about it, then you're going to probably be the one that's in the gallows. And so that's where this ended. So what's my takeaway from Esther 4 through 6? Well, I... First of all, this story is about courage, about how the queen, uh, she was faced with a difficult decision to enter the king's quarters, knowing that her life was at risk by going to the king's quarters without being invited in. And so that, that shows a lot of courage on her part. The thing that I love is seeing God's hand in all of this, where you have the king, he had favor on her. And he was willing to do anything that she would request up to give to give her up to half her uh, half of his kingdom. But then you also have the king. He was he had a hard time sleeping. And the first thing he did was he said, go get a book of records of, of good deeds. And so he it, it, in that that's when he was reminded of the story about Mordecai saving his life. And I, I, I love seeing God's hand work. And it just reminds me of how sovereign God is. And it reminds me how we ourselves, we shouldn't be afraid to take courage and to do the right thing. Even if the penalty is our own lives, we should still do the right things no matter what. Because who would you rather serve? 
this people on this earth or would you rather serve God who who is in charge of everything, who's sovereign, whose plan and his will is going to be seen done? That's what I read out of the book of Esther, chapters 4 through 6. I can't wait to read what's next. Actually, tomorrow, that's when we find out how Haman dies. And it's in the most, it's in the, the greatest, it's it's a great story. It's it's great how it ends. Um, and I'm, it, it's, it's just a great story. I can't say enough. Anyways, so that's my video blog. Thank you for watching. Daniel Fennell, have a great day. God bless. See you later.